So what do we know so far this year? So far this year, Apple has paid out $10.6 billion in dividends. It has bought back $22.9 billion of stock. A couple things to note about these totals. First, all cash generated in the U.S. has been returned to shareholders. And the next largest distribution of capital is far smaller than this total. This is by far number one in terms of distribution. At the same time, however, they've also done a corporate debt issuance, which at its time was the largest, of course now eclipsed by Verizon's $49 billion issue in September. And this is a firm that's generating almost $5 billion in free cash flow every month. Wall Street estimates have it at $51 billion for the year. So what can we expect the future to bring from a firm that's doing its record distributions, issuing debt, and generating record free cash flow? I think the best lesson we can learn comes from what we've seen, the lesson learned from Microsoft at the time, which was the largest authorized total payout in history, and studied in my case, Cash is King, which I teach in my Business 8307 class. At that time, Microsoft announced a $75 billion buyback, excuse me, payout, including dividends doubled to be $3.5 billion per year, $30 billion in stock buybacks, and the largest in history, a special one-time dividend of $32.6 billion. The striking lesson of that historic payout is its consequences. Microsoft completed its distribution and repurchased even more than announced, and in the process became a high dividend paying stock in terms of both dollars paid and dividend yield. Microsoft also over this time began issuing debt. If you look at what has happened through today, we see that Microsoft continues to increase its dividends, has bought back over $150 billion of stock. In total, since the announcement of the historic payout, has paid over $200 billion to shareholders. And yet, Microsoft right now has more cash on its books than it did at the announcement of the largest payout in history. The case suggests that if Apple generates $5 billion a month in free cash flows, raises the $50 billion of financing it's expected to do, it too may complete what is again even larger record-setting distributions with even more cash than it holds right now. I think this is merely the tip of the iceberg of an incredibly interesting question, which is whether US firms really hold too much cash. I've mentioned how in my class I talk about the Microsoft case as an example of this. I've also done research on this, and if you're interested in learning more, I want to point you to the paper which answers the question, what did I do during my summer vacation? I just returned from sabbatical at Stanford where, amongst other things, I worked on the question more generally of whether U.S. firms are really holding too much cash. And I thank you very much for allowing me to talk. About